Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. I have four stories that broke in the last 24 hours. But first, I want to remind everybody that there is a live AMA by Stefan Thomas. He is the co founder of Coil and also the ex CTO of Ripple. Uh, you don't want to miss this. He is going to be able to take live questions. Follow him uh, on Reddit. You can find the link at the at coil twitter site and yeah it happens in just about two hours a little less than two hours i i don't think you want to miss this it will be very good i'm sure so the first story is an article that was written by marcus treacher he is the senior vice president of customer success i love that title and it was published in the crypto am they are an outfit out of London, they are really producing a lot of good content. There is a little bit of the article I want to read to you. But even an internet of value built on interledger and blockchain cannot fully liberate the flow of money around the world so that it is truly 24 by 7 and highly liquid. This requires the addition of a digital asset. So absolutely, he is talking about the value of XRP when it comes to liquidity in international remittances. So I'll put a link to this article in the description below if you want to read it in its entirety. And today in Japan, there is a new software by a company called Biddle. Biddle actually is owned uh, in a 50% share by the founder of Omise, who is Jun Hasegawa. And the product is called Shield. It will be Japan's first anti-money laundering tool for virtual currency exchange companies. It's very interesting because it can analyze the flow of the transaction related to the exact times of deposit and transaction, which is very instrumental in trade washing. So it will work first with Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP. And they're going to bring it to discussion for the preparation meeting of the G20 on June 8th and 9th. So I think if it is unveiled and thought as a very um, valuable product that should be also... Uh, shown to the FATF at the actual G20 meeting, it has a chance to be rolled out globally. So the FATF, which is the Financial Activities Working Group, or what is known as the Global Watchdog, uh, they have a big announcement that's going to be made at the G20 for some uniform regulation. And it is just a product I think uh, they would be highly interested in. There's also some information today from the SBI camp in regards to money tap. So money tap actually was created uh, as a separate company now, and that was because they brought in 13 new investors. They are also inviting more investors to participate. So with this uh, skin in the game, these new investors will be very instrumental in not only supporting the mobile app, but also help rolling it out domestically. So they did a live demonstration of settlement today at a store using that QR code. And I'm just am sure that they were uh, wanting to show it off to those new investors. So this is something we want to really follow because Mr. Kital last month said he has every intention of taking this mobile app global. And yes, the uh, new exchange here in Japan called Tao Tao, which is backed by Yahoo, it did indeed launch today. And they have a slogan, new money, new world. <laughs> I like it. Uh, to get some traction, they have a very aggressive marketing campaign with zero fees. So basically zero fee to transact, zero fee to open up your account, zero fee to maintain it. 
basically deposit and withdrawal, loading and unloading have zero fees. I think it will probably be a campaign that stays in place until they get some traction. It does say here that fees and expenses may change in the future. No doubt there will be fees in the future, but until they can, uh, I think, get on the radar, they're going to run with this zero fee campaign. Well, when we look at the virtual currency exchanges in Japan, there is nothing like the SBI VC trade site. This site is been recently announced that they are going to go after the institutional investors. Mr. Kitao is taking an ecosystem approach and he's going to leverage off the synergies of all his businesses that he has. So not only are you going to see the digital asset be used for remittances with SBI Remit, but I think you're going to see it rolled into the SBI liquidity market as well as some crypto related products that are going to be marketed to those institutional investors. And just for a little bit of trivia, I'm not sure if you know, but SBI Securities is ranked number one in Japan. And they are then followed by the Monex Securities, which is the owners of CoinCheck. And then Okasan Online Securities is in third place, respectively. So they they being SBI Securities, they are going to actually be the lead underwriter this month for four IPOs. Last year, they were number one in IPOs handled with a total of 86. That is just amazing. So when you look at the capabilities and the strength and the knowledge that Mr. Kitao has within this uh, ecosphere. This ecosystem approach is really going to work and I think you're going to see nothing like it at all. I don't see any um, reason why it's going to be delayed. The, the margin trading limits has been decided by the diet here and also uh, it is quite clear that the market is red hot and ready for that live board to be implemented. So I am looking forward to a July launch of those uh, additional features for the SBI VC trade site. And we have a lot to look forward to in the way that it develops and grows. And I have no doubt it's going to be number one in Japan. And if you didn't know, Mr. Kitao does write a blog, and today he wrote a blog at, what, 4.50 in the afternoon, and it's um, one that I want to kind of roll into the fluff because it's, um, I think, very, very interesting. So today's blog was written about a person who lived at the turn of the century called Masaoka Shiki, and he is a Japanese poet, author, and literary critic. Um, he's one of the four great haiku masters in Japan, and he was born in a samurai family, and the mother uh, was the daughter of a Confucian scholar. And if you know about Mr. Kitao, he is a scholar of the Chinese classics. So there's no doubt in my mind as to why he thinks Masaoka Shiki is a sensei or a teacher for him. And this is a little bit about the writings that Masaoka had, where he believed it was really important to always do good and not to sell as your self-advertising, but to do the good for the sake of the world. So when you have a good cause, you get a good effect. And I will put a link down in the description to his blog. And what I do want to do is look at some of the haiku that was written by this master. And it's this one in particular. This is a great site, by the way. I'm going to 
include this in the description too because it has the original Japanese haiku written in the hiragana and kanji and then it'll give you the romaji uh, pronunciation if you want to look at that and then also it gives you the English translation. So this is the one I want to look at which is happily. I climbed Mount Fuji and as my legs trembled on its peak awoke. And if you do come to Japan you have the chance to climb Mount Fuji if you come in July or August or September. Yeah, this mountain is 3,776 meters high and that three month season is very popular for climbing. I would say though, if you try to climb it during the Obon holiday uh, week in the summertime. It's a little crowded, but if you can uh, avoid that holiday week, I think it's not so bad. There are 10 different stations on the mountain and most people, I think, well, I'm not sure. I, I think the majority of people uh, start at the fifth station and one of the highlights or high points that people want to do is to see sunrise, the sunrise there. This is actually a picture taken in June, what, June 17th, and you can see there's still a lot of snow. This looks very difficult. I've not climbed it. Uh, according to what is written out there, um, in regards to its difficulty. It says that only some points are difficult and it doesn't require any climbing skills. It is a little strenuous. You have to be aware that being a challenging hike, the air does get thinner and some people do experience altitude sickness. But wow, I don't know if I consider this hill just a hike. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm sure a lot of people out there uh, would love to try this mountain. And if you get to the seventh or eighth um, point, what do they call it? Yeah, the yeah the point, the seventh or eighth point, there are huts for sleeping and you can uh, stay for as little as like around $45, $50 a night. I think the important thing though is to have the right kind of shoes, clothing, and the summit is often, even in the summertime, uh, below zero. So you have to be prepared for that. But if you are prepared, you can see something like this. This is actually a picture of sunrise at Mount Fuji. And this is um, a great article from the Tokyo Weekender, which I'll also include in the description because it talks about all the uh, highlights and and uh, preparation you need if you're interested in doing that. Okay, everybody. Yeah, do take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.